Today we're going to learn about Prismacolor pencils. So the first thing I wanted to show you is that Prismacolor pencils are actually a lot different than regular colored pencils. So I've got a Crayola plain old colored pencil here and I just want to show you real quick how there's a huge difference in the amount of pigment which means the amount of color that gets put down on your paper. So that's just a little bit there with the Crayola plain old colored pencil. So now I have a Prismacolor version of the similar color and I'm going to just show you real quick how much brighter and how much more pigmented it is. So the other thing that's important to know about Prismacolor pencils is that they're meant to be layered and they're also meant to be blended. So I'm going to show you some Prismacolor pencil techniques that you can use for your art. So when you're doing any sort of colored pencil drawing, you want to make sure that your first outline is done in very, very light pencil because colored pencil, depending on the color you use, has a hard time sometimes going over really dark pencil lines. So you want to make sure whatever you have was drawn really lightly. And then the other thing that's really important about Prismacolor pencils is like I was saying, they're meant to be blended and they're meant to be layered. So one really great way to make sure you have a realistic looking drawing is to choose a couple different shades of whatever color you're going to use. So in this case I'm going to do a sunflower. So I grabbed myself three different shades of yellow, a dark, a medium, and a light so that I'm able to add some shading. So the first thing you want to think about is where your darks might go in a specific image. So for my sunflower, I know that usually sunflower petals are darker as they get closer to the center. And then sometimes if there's some petals that are behind, those would also be a little bit darker. So I'm going to start by adding some shading using my darker yellow. And I'm not pressing extremely hard here. I'm kind of going lighter because I know I'm going to be making layers. And so I don't want to push too hard because if I do that, it makes it really difficult to add another layer on top. So I'm just kind of going in like this and adding a little bit here. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my lighter shade of yellow and I'm going to kind of give the whole petal a bit of color. And notice I went right over that darker yellow that I already put down. And since yellow is a lighter color, I am pushing a little bit harder. And that's only because yellow is a very transparent color. So now I'm filling all of these in like that. And then from here what I can do is I can grab that middle tone and add just a little bit of the middle tone kind of in between the darker and the lighter so just to give myself a little variation. And then in a minute I'm going to show you how you blend colored pencils because I don't think most people realize that they are meant to be blended, especially the Prismacolor ones. So the reason that they're more expensive is because they have more pigment in them, but they also look a lot more beautiful than some of those other cheaper colored pencils. So some last basic tips for using the Prismacolor pencils. First one is learning how to hold the pencil. So I know we're all used to holding pencils like this sometimes, but with colored pencils, and especially when you are shading, you want to hold them a little bit back, because what that will do is it will force your hand not to push as hard, and then when you go to blend later on, you'll get a nice blend. So you'll notice my hand is pretty far back on the pencil and I'm using the side of it. I'm not using the point and I'm just kind of going across this shape here. Other things to keep in mind is layering your shading. So I can either do my base color first and then put some shading or I can do some shading first and put my base color. But as long as I keep everything nice and soft and I don't push too hard anywhere, it should all blend out really nicely. And then last other thing is that it's really important to add lots of different shades of the same color. Like we were saying earlier with the sunflower, that's what makes things look a little bit more realistic. So 
we don't want an apple that's just one shade of red because that would be boring. And then last little tip is highlights. So one thing that's important with any realistic drawing is showing highlights and shadow. So shadow is the darker area of the image and then the highlight would be where the light was hitting the object. It's a good idea to leave your highlight white, so kind of block it off before you start shading so that you don't have to try to get your paper back to that white again. However, that doesn't always happen and sometimes you might forget and realize that you have to add a highlight later on. So here's a couple of different ways that you can do that. So one way to add your highlight, especially if you've already left yourself a nice negative space, is to grab your white colored pencil and fill it in and then kind of blend it out a little bit. So the white colored pencil actually can blend a little if you need it to. It will lighten up whatever color is underneath it, but it will also kind of blend nicely. So that's one way you could do it. But let's say you accidentally forgot to leave a highlight and so you just wanted to add a highlight to an area that was already fully colored in. There's two options. One is a white gel pen, which is a wonderful tool to have, and those basically just have acrylic paint type paint in them, and you would just draw with that and add your highlight. Now, if you don't have a white gel pen, another option is to just take a teeny, teeny bit of white acrylic on a pointy brush, and then that is another way that you could add a highlight, or I could even kind of make this highlight a little bit brighter.